Good morning. We're going to open up with a word from God before we talk to God in prayer today. Uh, our opening word for today is going to be coming from the 51st Psalm. And it's going to be from the inerrant King James Version. So I'm sure we should enjoy it and be blessed by it, uh, the message as well as how it sounds. Beginning at verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judge. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Verse 7, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Let's open up with a word of prayer at this time. Gracious God, we thank you for allowing us this opportunity to come together to share in this opportunity of this Bible study and this discussion with your people. Be with those who have logged on to be with us on today. Be with those who have desired to be with us and cannot. Continue to keep us all. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. All right. It's good to see each and every one of you and have opportunity for you to see me uh, on today as we begin our Bible study, continuing to personally pursue God. Our study for some time now has been personally pursuing God. And remember, one of the things that we like to make mention to you is that God is more than an ideal. God is more than a principle. And today we're in session nine. And we're going to be talking about the keys to a powerful prayer life. The keys to a powerful prayer life. As we get ready for this, I want to just take this opportunity to welcome those of you that are part of our regular brown bag Bible study, members of Mount Carmel. God bless you. Good to have you with us on today, as well as those friends and members of Mount Carmel that are sharing with us. And of course, we acknowledge uh, always uh, our pastor emeritus, Dr. Joseph B. Felker Jr., as well as Sister Shirley Felker. God bless you. And we thank God for all of the leaders that make up the Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church. Now, as we go into today's discussion of personally pursuing God, it's important for us to understand, brothers and sisters, that there is a connection between personally pursuing God and having a powerful prayer life. Now, I want to open up, and I've not done this in a little while, but I want to open up with some questions today that I want you to just think about and reflect on. Now, the questions that I'm going to give you today that I want you to think about and reflect on, there's one answer that you cannot use. OK, there's one answer that you cannot use, and that answer is the words all the time. You can't answer any of these questions with all the time. I want you to be specific when you think about your answer to these questions. For instance, have you ever asked yourself, I wish I knew how to really pray? You know, uh, do you really know what that means? Well, you know, when you, when you say that, you know, so many times we've heard people praying in our lives and we say, man, I wish I could really pray like brother so-and-so. I wish I could really play, pray like sister so-and-so. And, and so, but ask yourself, what does that really mean? Are you saying you want to say the words that they say? Are you saying you want to use the phrases that they use? Or are you actually saying, I want my prayer to be as effective as theirs are? Something for you to think about. Another question I want you to think about, when do you pray? When do you pray? Remember now, you can't say all the time, okay? You got to be more specific. Think about it. When do you pray? Another question for you. Who and what do you pray for? 
Just think about it. who and what do you pray for? If you had to make a list of the times that you've prayed before, uh, think about it. what would you write down? Who or what do you pray for? Another question I want you to think about, how often do you pray for others and not yourself at the same time? You know, I'm talking about interceding now. I'm talking about when your entire prayer for that moment is not for you at all, but is for someone else. I know sometimes we pray for all our stuff and we get, over, we get everything we want out the way and we say, oh, yo, oh yeah, Lord, bless the world too. Oh yeah, Lord, bless those other people too. But I'm saying, what are the, are the, when has there been a time when you have only prayed for others and not yourself? A couple more questions I want you to think about. After you pray, do you turn the situation over to Jesus or do you still weary? When you get up off your knees, when you open your eyes, when you finish your prayer posture, do you, as the song say, turn it over to Jesus and stop worrying about it? Or do you just say, OK, uh, I gave it to him. Uh, let's see what happens. Think about it. Now, do you know uh, that we pray before going to bed so that we can sleep better? Do you know that's why we pray before we go to bed? It's not just an ideal or something that you do before you go to bed, pray. But we pray, we actually pray before we go to bed so that we can sleep better. Try that instead of a sleeping pill. Try that instead of a uh, relaxing beverage to help you wind down, lay down and close your eyes. Think about that. Think about the whole idea. Sometimes we don't know why things happen in our lives or why we do things. We've been doing things for years and never thought about why we do them. You know, everybody knows that we generally pray before we go to bed. You know, but the real question is that you want to ask yourself is, uh, do you sleep well after you do that? It becomes important uh, for you to understand that reality. I wonder, do you hear what I'm talking about today? Now, as we continue on, it becomes important for us to understand, brothers and sisters, that the word of God, God's word, and we're going to be using a lot of God's word today. OK, we're going to be really dealing with the word of God. We're going to let the word of God go through us and come to us for the day. And it becomes important for us to recognize that reality. Now, the word of God reveals keys to having a powerful prayer life when you pursue God personally. OK, it becomes important for us to understand that we have many of the solutions and answers right within us that are in the word of God. That word that you're carrying around, that word that you have in your home, that word that you uh, I hope this is not true, but that word that you only open up on Sundays or that word that you only open up when you're having a problem or a situation or a circumstance. But that word of God, that Bible that you have reveals the keys to having a powerful prayer life when you're pursuing God personally. So let's take a look at some things now. It's important for us, first of all, to understand, brothers and sisters, that you need to have a close and a correct relationship with God, which means that you pray to God and then you do what he says. You don't have a relationship with God or anyone else if you ask them to help you. They tell you what to do and you don't do it. OK, it becomes important for us to understand, brothers and sisters, that for our close and correct relationship with God, it's important for us to understand that we pray to God and we do what he says. So let's look at what the word says. Proverbs 21, 21. He who pursues righteousness and loyalty finds life, righteousness and honor. Look at that connection there. Look at that connection there. When you pursue righteousness and loyalty, you find it. But not only do you find it, you find righteousness and honor. But then here's another one in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You see, it becomes important for us to, to not only want the things from God, but it's important for us to understand what things he wants us and requires for us to do. Becomes, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. We're going to get to the all these things part because we tend to like the all these things part. But we don't tend to like the seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness part. We want stuff, but we don't want to do stuff. But let's take a look. Let's look at an Old Testament passage of scripture. We looked at Proverbs. We've jumped into the New Testament to Matthew. Now let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 7 through 9 and then verse 13. I'm going to read them for you. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 7 through 9, and then we're going to jump down to verse 13. Listen to this. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. They will come out against you one way and will flee before you seven ways. 
the Lord will command the blessing upon you in your bones and in all that you put your hand to. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people to himself as he swore to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then this verse 13. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you will not only be above or rather you only will be above and you will not be underneath. If you listen to the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I charge you today to observe them carefully. Again, it becomes important for us to understand if you're going to have a close and correct relationship with God, it means that you pray to God and you do what he says. And the word of God shows us what to do. Amen. Let's continue on to look at that because there's a number of things in the word today that we're going to share. And over and over again, it becomes important for me to emphasize to you guys that it is the word of God that reveals the keys to having a powerful prayer life when you pursue God personally. So even in these times in which we're living now, these times of the pandemic, civil unrest, suspicion and independence, you need to trust God. You need to depend on on God in everything that you do. And I know in these times of pandemic, we're full of fear. In these times of civil unrest, we're full of suspicion. In these times of every man for himself and every woman for themselves, we're in times of independence. But in the midst of all of that, brothers and sisters, we still need to learn how to trust God. We still need to learn how to depend on God for everything, everything, not some things, but everything that we do. Let's look at what the word says about that. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says these words. Call to me and I will answer you. I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. But then in the New Testament of 1 John chapter 3, verses 21 through 22. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him. Because, here it comes, we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Okay, he gives us what is in his will, but he also expects us to do what he expects us to do. It becomes important for us to understand that. We need to trust God. We need to depend on God in everything that we do. But then there's James chapter 4, verse 2. Listen to this. You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. Now, it becomes important for us to understand that because sometimes we tend to emphasize that passage of Scripture, especially in the language of the King James Version, you have not because you ask not. And it becomes important for us to make sure that we don't get that confused. We don't get that twisted. That don't mean that you have the right and opportunity to ask God for anything that you want and you'll get it. And it also doesn't mean that because you don't have it, it's because you didn't ask for it. OK, everything that you want is not in God's will for your life. OK, whether you think it's a good thing or not. And I've shared with this on many occasions when we were talking about praying uh, some sessions ago. And it becomes important for us to understand it's not enough to just use the magic words and everybody likes to use this. I prayed about it. OK. And, and so the but the real response or the real question or the real answer that we're looking for is not that I prayed about it. But what did God say after I prayed about it? You know, it's not enough to just say, well, I talked to God and I asked God about it, because sometimes we will use that as the excuse to get what we want. We want to buy something. We don't know if we should or not. And we say, well, you know, I prayed about it and then I bought it. OK, well, you prayed about it. But did you listen to the Lord? The Lord might have told you don't buy. It. <laughs> OK, you know, it becomes important. You know, I was going to sign the contract and I was really nervous about signing the contract. But I prayed about it and I signed the contract. What well, did the Lord tell you to sign the contract? OK, you prayed about it. You asked the question. You went before him. But did you wait for him to give you the piece of the answer to go in the direction that you need to go? Again, brothers and sisters, the word of God reveals the keys to having a powerful prayer life when you pursue God personally. Listen to this. We must pray according to the will of God, not our personal desires. You see, God will give you 
whatever is in his will for you. I'm going to repeat that again for the hearing impaired. God will give you whatever is in his will for you. So please don't get this confused, or as we used to say, don't get it twisted. It becomes important for you to understand that you must pray according to the will of God. I know the Bible says whatever you ask in his name, touch and agree on his name, and whatever you ask, he'll give it. If it's in his will, he'll do it. It becomes important for you to understand it must be within the will of God. So what we really need to do, brothers and sisters, is get into the word of God and learn the will of God. Amen. When we learn when we learn what it is and how it is that God wants us to live and do, then we know how to ask for what we want and we'll get it. But let's look at some more word here. Uh, New Testament word. Uh, First John, chapter five, verses 14 and 15. Listen to this. This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything, here it comes, according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from him. That's the word of God. OK, I don't write it. I just teach it. Listen to the Old Testament passage of Psalm 34 and 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Now, we can't know how good God is if we don't go to him. If we don't take refuge in him, if we don't go to him for safety and then find out that he provides that safety for us. If we don't go to him in time of our need and find out that he provides for us in the midst of our needs. Oh, taste and see. That means yeah, go, go before God. Let him know what's going on with you. Make sure you let him know that you want to do whatever's in his will. Amen. Got to be careful. Got to start, stop teaching. About to start preaching here. Yeah. We calm down a little bit. OK. But then there's a New Testament passage of James chapter four, verse three. Listen to the word you ask and do not receive because you ask. Here it comes with the wrong motives. Man, here you go. Here you ask. I'm going to repeat that again. You ask and do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. So many times we go to God and ask for stuff that we want. Very rarely do we ask God for what we need. So it becomes important for us to understand that. And, 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 and when you come to understand the will of God, even in your prayer life, your prayer life will become powerful and you'll be blessed because you'll get what you need. You won't learn how to, how can, you won't learn how to make do. It's not about making do. It's about realizing what God has blessed you with and knowing how to manage that, that he has blessed us with. Because I'm going to tell you something. God knows that sometimes we can't handle stuff that, that we get. You know, we get beside ourselves. When we get stuff, especially if our stuff is better than someone else's stuff, instead of instead of using our stuff to help other people, we want to flaunt the stuff that we have. You know, uh, I've never I've never I've never heard anybody. Very rarely have I heard of anybody. Uh, and this see, I'll use some stuff that I have owned so that way won't nobody think I'm picking on them. But uh, I've never heard of anybody driving around. Very few people will you hear driving around in a Chevy brand new Chevy and pull up and tell somebody, you know, God is good. You know, God is good. But boy, let them drive up in a new Cadillac. Many times they'll say, you know, God is good. Well, guess what? God is just as good with a Volkswagen as he is with a Cadillac. God is just as good with a two bedroom house as he is with a one bedroom house. God is just as good with a five bedroom house as he is with a studio. It becomes important for you to know what it is that God has blessed you with and what you have in the time beings of the circle of your life and what you're working toward and everything. Because don't get me wrong, being assertive, being aggressive, going to through, make life better for yourself. That's all great stuff. But it's important for you to understand God is not a in Jesus name is not a magical word. Touching the green is not a magical word. And 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 you're not you're not not being blessed. Because you don't have as much as someone else. You know, what gets me is that there's so many voices out there that tell us that we don't have wealth or we don't have health because we don't have faith. It becomes important for us to understand that uh, everything that we are, have the opportunity to have comes from the will of God. And so we should understand that reality and not try to get things so that we can spend it on our own pleasures, but do everything that we do so that we can give God glory. Now. Remember now, continuing to look at this reality, the word of God, again, 
can't emphasize this enough, reveals the keys to having a powerful prayer life when you pursue God personally. Listen, you should always expect an answer from God. You should always expect an answer from God. It may be yes. It may be no. It may be not now. And remember, if it's not now, remember now a delay is not a denial. Just because you don't get it today does not necessarily mean that God won't give it to you tomorrow, especially if he didn't say no about it. But now it, it, either one of those is going to be an answer. Sometimes we don't like no to be an answer. And for some of us, we've been praying for stuff and God been telling us no. And we say, you know, I'm still praying to God for it. I'm still praying. God told you no 10 years ago. OK. And so you need to come to understand to accept his will and continue to move on because it will be an answer. Now, let's look at the word. First, John, chapter three, verses 21 and 22. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Did you hear that? Listen, that's why it's so important, brothers and sisters, to understand that the word of God reveals the keys to a powerful prayer life when we pursue God personally. Listen, if your heart doesn't condemn us, 1 John 3, 21 through 22 says, if your heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments. We keep his commandments and we do what is pleasing in his sight. Amen. More word for you from James chapter one, verses six and seven. But he must ask in faith without doubting. I'm going to repeat that again. But he must ask in faith without doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. That's how come. If you remember, I asked you earlier, you know, uh, when you pray, are you still worrying after you're praying? OK, why you go to God? Think about this now. Why go to God and then not believe he's going to do something? OK, if you're going to turn it over to him, we've got to learn to live like we've given it to him. Amen. You know, now we know we pray before the, we, we, we pray before we go to bed so that we can sleep good at night. The last thing we want to do is put all our stuff before God and then know that it's in his hands. And then go to sleep knowing that it's in his hands. You know, my buddy, he's gone on to be with the Lord, Brother Sonny. When we used to study the Psalms, one of the favorite passages that he used to like was a passage when David was being hunted by his enemies. And even when he was being hunted by his enemies and they were trying to kill him in every hand, uh, he would talk to the Lord and he would get a good night's sleep. And Brother Sonny would say, well, man, he trusts in the God. So these folks trying to kill him and he talking about getting a good night's sleep. I said, yep. That's what it's all about. Turning it over to God and knowing that God got it. And if God if God has it, then God has you. Amen. Amen. Now, let's continue to look on at that. Now, remember our theme again. The word of God reveals the keys to having a powerful prayer life when you pursue God personally. Brothers and sisters, this is important for us to understand. God's word is available to guide you toward becoming powerful in your prayers. Think about it. God's word can guide your words. You know, you, you want to be a powerful prayer? Get into the word of God and you will find that God's words can guide your words. Let's take a look, for instance, for instance, let's take a look at our words. Give me a heart to know you. Give me a heart to know you. Let's look at God's words. Jeremiah 24 and 7. I will give them a heart to know me, for I am the Lord and they will be my people and I will be their God. For they will return to me with their whole heart. Amen. Another word from us. Another word from us. Let us know the truth and set us free. Let's hear a word from God. John chapter eight, verse 32. And you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Here's another word we shared in the devotional passage on today. Here's our words. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Here's the word of God. Psalm 51 and 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. See, the word of God can show you the words that you can use in your powerful prayers. 
Amen. It becomes important for us to understand that. Now, regarding the type of person that we need to be as we personally pursue God, we need to know what the Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul to write to the Philippians and apply to our own lives as well. The Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write these words to the Philippians in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also the interests of others. Now, those are some words that we all ought to, we ought to put on our refrigerators or maybe we ought to put in the mirror, okay, uh, in our bedrooms as well as the mirror in our bathrooms that says, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regarding one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Amen. The word of God. Now. As we personally pursue God, brothers and sisters, it becomes important that we understand that it is God's will that we not only pray for others, but it is God's will that we help others with their burdens and their needs as well. Listen to what the word of God says in Galatians chapter six, verse two. Galatians chapter six, verse two. Bear one another's burdens, therefore fulfill the law of Christ. Fulfilling God's word has to do with bearing one another's burdens. What a connection. OK, do not simply pray for someone, but ask God to tell you or show you what you can do for that person. It becomes very, very important for us in our lives as saints of God. And then finally, brothers and sisters, as we wrap up today's session, I just want you to know these things. God's word shows us that he expects us to be powerful in prayer on behalf of others. His word also shows us that he wants us or he wants you, he wants me to not only pray powerfully for others, but to be involved in ministering to others. You see, brothers and sisters, when you spend time personally pursuing God and praying for others, God will touch and begin to change your heart. And you will begin to see in yourselves and live what it means and what it says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. That passage of scripture. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, new things have come. Amen. That's what we want to see. That's what we want others to see. And of course, that's what we want God to see. When we personally pursue him and become in our lives a person of powerful praying, finding that God is strengthening us and enabling us to not only get stronger in him, but to help our brothers and sisters as well. I just want to take this opportunity to say, brothers and sisters, we're so glad to have had you to share with us on today. And we want you to continue to be with us uh, on today as we continue to share. And I'm going to turn this phone off here that I got here. <laughs> and I want to say that I'm thankful to have the opportunity to share with you on today. And I uh, want to say thank you to our camera person, Sister Jones. Say hello today, Sister Jones. Okay, we're so glad and we have our brother Will with us on today. We're so grateful brother Will being with us on today Amen. and uh, may God continue to bless you and keep you. <clears throat> we look forward to being with you on this coming Saturday at 10 o'clock for our Sunday school lesson preview review. Uh, we're grateful we have our regulars as always with us. Uh, you all see him on screen because he logs in as well and that's our own Deacon Irby who is always with us and we can count on him being with us uh, online as well. Uh, and so we thank each and every one of you. And again, uh, be ready to be with us on this coming Saturday at 10 o'clock for our Sunday School Preview Review. And until we shall come together again, take care and God bless.